This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best website for building websites. More on that later. Happy Thanksgiving, one and all. That is today. And I usually actually celebrate holidays by going skateboarding, or at least I did when I was younger. Sarah is out of town. My brother is visiting. His sleeping hours are all out of wonk. So I'm just going to go and, and live my normal day as if I would, as if nobody was here. And then later on, we're going to do a whole Thanksgiving feast. We're going to cook food. Sorry, I am very, very stuffy. Uh, but hopefully I'll get a good session in because I sort of missed out yesterday. The thing is with vlogging, I was like, oh, I, I want to start vlogging like pretty much every single day. And then my, my brother came into town and I was like, oh, it's impossible to vlog when you have someone to sort of show around and someone to hang out with because obviously it's a little weird that I'm like, you don't mind if I pull out a camera and film your face the entire time, do you? So you just don't. But the roads are completely empty. And usually on holidays, especially like Christmas, that's when I was like, oh, let's go street skating. Let's get the gang together and go street skating and all that stuff. But I've been so hermity recently that I would rather just skate by myself. So really, I just need to find a parking lot because most businesses are closed anyways. But I'm gonna start off by going into a coffee shop, doing a little bit of writing, designing, and editing because I do have computer work that I have to get done. But that's also like a side of my life that I'm really, really trying to kind of get down. Uh, but then after that, yeah, I'll start filming and we'll, we'll do the whole damn thing. We're going to go skate, do tricks. And, and I'm actually really excited because I'm going to skate my box and flat rail rather than anything else. Because out of like the nine sessions I've had recently, the only, only fun session I've had has been on my flat rail and box, which is saying a lot about a lot of things. It's like, do I even like skating anymore? Well, obviously, if the circumstances are almost perfectly right. I think I'm just tired of trying to like get good at things that I'm not super good at, but I don't know. It's weird. I don't know what it is. I think it's just the nostalgia vibe of skating like a box and a fly rail, which is what I grew up skating. So that's what we're gonna try to find. And it's gonna be a beautiful, beautiful day. So I hope you're having a good Thanksgiving or had a good Thanksgiving already. Um, I think a lot of people probably are used to celebrating it with like a lot of family. Sorry to interrupt. I have a tendency to just keep rambling. Um, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. So that's exciting. I actually just re-sign a contract with them for the next year. So, uh, I have a job. So we sat in the coffee shop for about two hours and I pretty much edited most of the time and the video that's exporting is taking like an hour and a half so my computer's just open in my car. But I wanna skate. It's just we've been working the entire time. I haven't even gotten into designing, which is what my voice be cracking, what I was excited about doing, but I still need to cook Thanksgiving meal with my brother. But right now I feel like I really need to go skate for at least two hours. So we're not gonna be cooking until noonish. I think that's fine, right? Lunch, dinner-ish Thanksgiving. I think it's cool. I think we got kind of lucky. Uh, we found a manual pad over yonder. I'm gonna take out my flat rail as well, but uh, the rest of the parking lot, kind of like all of California, which I've discovered, um, they're all slanted. So like you can find so many parking lots on Thanksgiving or on Sundays. It's basically like a Sunday uh, where all these businesses are closed. The problem is just all these parking lots are so unbelievably slanted. So I got to figure out how to, uh, how to optimize the ground here, find like the one spot that's kind of flat because when you're going uphill or downhill, it changes skateboarding so drastically. Like just going up, you're gonna slow down. You can't learn a new trick like that. Uh, so we're figuring it out, but like going onto this manual pad right here, it'd be cool to set up my box, grind, land in a manual, and it's even long enough to where you can set up your feet and maybe do some type of flip trick out. I don't know. I mean, it's really, really, really low too, which works out in my favor. Cause like, I think there's a possibility for some kind of like slide or grind and flip your board out to a manual, which would be so sick. Like a Smith kickflip nose manual would be really fun. Plus, for whatever reason, the box is actually staying. This thing slides around all the time. So I say we do things like that. It's so, so bright, but let's get some combos. This is such a good insight to how I feel about humanity. Like the fact that it's just calm, no one's around, things aren't busy today. I mean, I just, I, I love this. Like I like, I like an empty world where things are calm. I feel like I'm always just so, like my, uh, what's it called? Your neurons are always firing and it's so much. But let's start off with a 50-50 manual. I think, I think we got, oh my God, I haven't warmed up at all. Oh. First try. 
I felt pretty good, except for the fact that some idiot put a rock on the run up. Must have been your mom or something. Um, or stretch the parking lot with a lot of cracks. So I think you just kind of have to get used to it being a little wavy. Oh man, I haven't warmed up at all. Okay, here, let's do a couple kick bumps. How about that? This ground is kind of, it's a little like lumpy, but I think that's perfectly fine. Kind of makes the, kick, the manual a little bit cooler. That's pretty good. Maybe do a little nolly flip. Nolly flip first thing, so difficult to get a proper one. See what I mean? <laughs> it's just hard to get like that pop flick the way that you want. All right, I think I'm gonna move on to a, uh, maybe like a 5.0 manual 180. We're gonna throw the 180 in there just to add a little bit of spice. Plus we have so much time to set up that it works out quite nicely. There we go. Ah, I like it, I like it that. She is working that to back. Oh, okay. Now I think I wanna try the Smith variations. Maybe the first one that's kind of legitimate. Wow, it grinds so good for Smiths. It's like a Smith manual kickflip. Whew, man. I usually warm up a lot more than this, but I think because I'm filming, I'm like, let's just get it. Let's just go ahead and get it. Get it good, why not? Wow, I almost did that first try. So I think the box actually moved quite a bit for that one. That makes me happy though, because it did grind the Smith really well. The problem is that the speed, I need to go much faster. And when I'm kick flipping off drops, usually when you do manual flip tricks, it's a lot easier if you actually have some height off the drop. This is really close to just flat ground. So doing like a nose manual variation, nollie flip is gonna be quite a battle. And I think a Smith manual kick flip, I think we got this within four tries. That's my prediction. Like that. Might be a little, little on the landing. Anyways, how's your Thanksgiving going? Is it going well? Did you have a good day? Genuinely curious. I really, I love this vibe right here. Just the calm, calm, cool world. Oh, I'm actually excited about cooking with Matthew a little bit later on. I think I'll film that, make a little vlog out of it. I think I touched, but yeah, see, it's fine. I'm pretty sure I touched at the beginning. So if your tail scrapes, to me, it's like not even worth really committing to the last part. Cause it's like, if the universe is gonna give me that good kickball bow, I don't wanna be wasting it on the try before, even though that's not how it works. Oh my God! <sighs> Smith Manual, we got that. Oh, I was ready for it. Oh! Dude, what the hell? What was that? Okay, that's weird. I think that has something to do with the crack right here. I think I waited like a second too long. This is cool though, we're like starting off the session with a good trick. Usually it takes a while to get put into here, but I'm trying to utilize all of my energy because sometimes I burn it out fast on warm-up tricks. It's kind of a waste. All right, I'd be sucking. <sighs> Probably not something you want to be screaming randomly. Damn it. Oh my God. Maybe the manual pad is a little more off than I thought it was. After this one, we'll probably do less of a raw clip. Maybe focus a bit more on just like, cause like this actually isn't anything. Like this many tries is literally nothing. This is warm ups. Oh my God. We landed it, but by 
but to what, you know the saying? Have you ever have that where you literally just cannot think of like the simplest word for something? You're like, man, my, my blank's beating. And they're like, heart? And you're like, yes. That happens to me all the time. Which is weird, because I'm so smart. Just kidding. I can never really find the words though. Okay, I gotta, we're cutting to the landing. Let's go. Yay. That was a good one. So I'm kind of just cutting right into a hard one. I've always wanted to do a Nolly front crook to nose manual. I've never ever even, have I tried it? I think so, I think I've tried it, but it's, it's, a, it's a tough one. Like it's tough in general for anyone. <laughs> it's like, it's not a common type of maneuver. So the Nolly front crook, the reason it's usually scary is because you gotta worry about the curb. If you don't get into the ledge correctly, your ankles could hit the curb in a very awkward way. So I'm gonna just do like a Nolly 50, Nolly nose grind. And then I'm just gonna go for the Nolly front crook. And once I actually do a good Nolly front crook or lock into a solid one, you know, bada bing bada boom is all I'm trying to say. But here's the Nolly 50. Literally missed the Nolly 50, but I'm gonna count it because I'm not really worried about my back truck actually getting onto the ledge. Might have hit more of an angle too. It's kind of bizarre, like my Nolly stance I feel like after all these years, I could actually improve it. I set up Nolly like I set up for a Nolly flip. I think most people set up sort of like a Nolly heel. All right, Nolly nose grind. Like, that's what I mean. That's like, you gotta do the Nolly nose grind. Like the Nolly 50, you can get away with. You don't need a solid one. The Nolly nose grind, you have to get your body to adjust to leaning forward. So it's important, it's important to do that go very solid here's what's cool though like the nollie front crook even though i know it's going to be tough to do it to nose manual the nollie nose grind you're all the way up there and to pop out you have to like pop out to make sure your tail clears the nollie front crook you're actually a little lower you see like my back can actually be as low as the ledge the scary part is the board not flipping out to primo so you have to put all that weight on your front truck and then go for it so just go for a Nolly front crook right off the bat. There we go. Got into it. It's actually a good lock-in. Huh, I might actually... God, the sun's in the worst spot. Well, it's a decent spot, but it's like, if I put the camera behind the ledge, which would be a better angle, there's gonna be so much shadow, but I think it's fine. I think that's the angle. It's not the good angle for like the vlog, because you can't see me talking and expressing myself. It's a really good angle for that clip, dude. Instagram clip, which is kind of what we're aiming for. It's kind of like the, the Thanksgiving session. What tricks did we get? This is a good one. <laughs> yeah, like that. Hold the nose manual. 180 out. Now this one's tough because when you mess up on this one, you go down. So I'll, pre I'll be hitting the ground, so I have to prepare to like, I'm ready to fall. But when you lean forward, you have to give it that uncomfortable lean forward. And usually on the first couple, you get wheel bite, you fall forward. And it's just not a pretty sight, but you gotta start going for it. When your back wheels touch, it means you didn't fully commit. And that's kind of a message in life. Like people literally say, fall forward. That means you're fully, fully committing. When your tail touches, when you fall backwards, it means you're like a little scared so you're leaning back. Nah, nah, nah. See, I fell forward, but not on the manual. I want to fall forward on the manual. Oh, that would have been perfect. If I would have tried harder. See, that's like, well, it's me just denying what I just said where I need to fall forward. I actually wasn't really committing at all. All right, so this one, I'm just gonna lean really far forward, hope for the best. Ooh, then I missed the lock-in. The lock in yada. Boom. It's just a lot of weight to be hitting the ground in, a, in two wheels. Ooh, ah, it's such a bummer. Oh my God, I haven't even gotten into one nose manual. Oh my God, why is he going primo? Oh my God, that was it. See, that's when you just throw it away. Why, why would you throw it away? Oh my 
my god, I did it? <laughs> but I was gonna fall forward the whole time. I did it though, let's watch it. I feel like that's fine. It's kind of unfortunate. Um, the box was in the way the whole time of the actual nose manual. Um, I think it's fine. Shoot, maybe I'll do one more. I'll do one more with the, oh my God, I'm an idiot. I don't know, we'll see. I'll do one, I'll try five more and if I don't do it again, I think it's fine. I keep turning backside. This is so bizarre. Like now that I'm actually locking into it, my body's, my shoulders are going like in. Really hard to keep them out, open, whatever. <laughs> like, look at that, the back 180. I just cannot stop turning my shoulders. My God, yes! You know, it's wild. The whole time my body wanted to turn, it just never did. <sighs> Golly, that took forever. You know, this angle is kind of far away. It's like the perfect angle for like an Instagram clip because I could zoom in and just wipe straight across. But it also just looks better when you could see someone from the side, especially when the sun is perfectly, perfectly going that direction. Like it's just like perfectly lit that way. So whatever next trick we do, this is gonna be the lighting. Let me move these little obstacles. And here we go, let's get into it. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do though. Cause I definitely wanna try something Cause that was like a good one trick. I kind of want to get a good two banger and then we'll go home and hang out with bro bro. And now a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to build a website. They have this thing called Fluid Engine now, which is essentially just drag and drop anything that you want to put on this page. They also have award-winning templates to choose from. So you don't need to know anything about design to design a really beautiful website. They also have email campaigns, which I always say this, but it's the best social media site because anyone who subscribes actually will get your email on like other social media sites where no matter how many followers you get, you can get the same amount of engagement as you did when you had one tenth the amount of followers. They also have analytics. So if you have like a blog or you have an actual store, they have all the backend information to ideally be able to observe and increase your revenue and at least understand all the elements of your business. I think the most shocking thing they have of all is custom merch. So you can build a merchandise website straight through a third party site that's connected to Squarespace. So it's like this easy, like you click a few buttons and you're connected. And they even design like pictures of models wearing the stuff that you have. And the amount of different stuff that you can put on merchandise is, is ridiculous. Like they have like coasters, t-shirts, hoodies, all that stuff. It's, it's pretty amazing. So you can create, yeah, a brand with a, without having to do anything besides design. And they have members area. So on your website, you can have people who pay a certain amount to check out a course that you're selling. So if you have some kind of talent, I would recommend that 100% to create a paywall on something that you're doing like, um, you know, selling cooking classes. So check it out. If you wanna click the link in the description down below or go to squarespace.com slash John Hill, you get 10% off your first purchase or domain. Peep it and uh, I promise that if you're gonna build a website, Squarespace is the way to go. Uh, thanks so much, and I will see you uh, in just a second. Enjoy the rest of the video. There's a couple of things that I think I could do. I kind of like the idea of like a switch back Smith to switch nose manual. But like, I feel like at this point I should do either a like slide flip manual, which is insane, or like a something manual flip out. So honestly, the best thing I should do is a grind to switch nose manual, fakey flip out just because I love faggy flips, but I'm not quite sure which trick to do into it. There's no way I could do switch backsmith to switch nose manual faggy flip, but that would be such a banger. Um, I'll try to switch back smith first. We'll see like where we're at with that because uh, I don't know, it's just a trick not a lot of people do, but I think I mentioned in my last video that switch back smith is like, it's a trick that I can naturally do, so I should do it more because it's kind of a hard trick. It's like a specialty. A little uphill too, so I gotta get used to it. But I mean, that would be nuts, dude. Switch back Smith and switch nose manual fakey flip. There's no way. I mean, even switch back Smith, switch nose manual, I'd be happy with. So maybe we'll we'll tinker. We'll tinker. I'll try a couple of those. Oh man, I don't know if I can go like up the hill. Hit a switch back Smith. There we go. So we grinded an inch and a half. <laughs> I really have no idea what I should do. Switch back Smith. I don't know, nothing feels like quite right. Like switch back Smith and switch manual is cool, but is it quite right? I feel like if you don't skate, you won't care. 
Oh man, I'm sticking anyway, so maybe that's just telling me for me, like, nope. I was thinking a second ago, like, something that would be incredible, but just terrifying is like a switch front blunt to switch manual. That I would just be stoked, on, stoked with, on with. <sighs> okay. But even that right now, I'm like, can I switch front blunt right now? Like, do I have the tenacity? Hmm, I don't know. This is my thinking process. It like takes me forever to come up with something. I've, I've literally sat and stared for like 20 minutes just being like, what can I do? Which is cool. That means there's a lot of variations I could do. So practice is working out, but then you just get confused with all the options. Life's easier with no options. Just kidding. All right. So right now, well actually, actually, blunt to fakie manual. And if I could keep my shoulder straight, that would be sick. Here, let's try, let's try, let's try a blunt. Cause we gotta do a blunt before we even do a switch from blunt. Oh, immediately stick. Wax. See, this is what's cool when you're skating an obstacle by yourself. You can wax it as much as you'd like. Yeah, then manual. Huh. Try a couple. Like it definitely doesn't feel hard to try. Is it gonna be hard to hold it all the way? I imagine so. I think my shoulders are going to want to keep turning as I'm manualing, but that's kind of weird. Like if you do a 180 fakie manual, it's actually much harder. When you do blunt, since you're already 90, your shoulders lock into place 90. So then when you go to fakie, it doesn't feel like you're fully rotating into it. So it's actually easier to balance straight without your body wanting to keep turning, which is the most annoying thing ever. <laughs> yeah, like it's super not scary to commit to. And then I hit a rock. Ah, uh, a couple more. Oh. A little shove out, I'd be, I'd be certain on that. <laughs> Look at that, I haven't even gone a foot yet. There we go, see? We got three feet. And my shoulders maintained, I just fell forward with the pressure. But like I didn't keep turning, so. That's the trick. We gotta go twice as fast though. I, I literally gotta haul ass at this, which makes hauling forward so much scarier. Oof. Oh, that's gonna feel good if I do it though. I literally just did it. No way. That's like the one too where I'm like, should I do it again? Cause I was so wacky. Hell no, we learned our lesson from the Nolly Front Krug. Dude, no way. We just did that. Hell yeah. What are the odds? That's actually nuts. Man, that felt so cool. Like that's why like, when the world opens up like an opportunity like that, it's like, hey, you can do blunt fakie manuals and you can hold them for as long as you want you should expand on those variations. Like I have the tendency to be like, cool, I did that. Now let's go back to the Nolly Front Crook nose. that took me forever and do variations of that. But it's like, no, like, oh, that was so fun. Like if, if skating, I, I, I've said this in like the last vlog, I was like, I just wanna skate fly rolls and boxes. Add manual pass to that. And like, that's all I want. Like that makes me so happy just being like, occasionally I want some stairs. Occasionally I want like ramps and stuff, but like fly rail, flat box, flat manual pad, like, I'm the happiest person ever. I can do that until like I can't walk anymore, I think. Oh, so that was nice. I mean, I feel like for the sake of my brother being in town, I've been up since, so, like I have been going, you know, seemingly nonstop. My computer died. I don't even know if my video actually exported. It's 11 a.m. now. I've been up since six. I've been going since about seven. So that I still hate that. I'm like, I've only worked four hours or technically like been going for four hours. But my brother said, nice do your thing. Okay. Finishing up, you wanna cook? I think it'd be cool if we just got straight into it. And then maybe I'll actually work out with him, which is like so hard for me. I hate working out with people. Like I like doing it in my own world, but you know, my brother's like massive. It's just like, he's, he's like the opposite of me where I think he's like a motivational. He was like, oh, you got this bro. Like he, he is like that. And I'm like, I don't think I need that pressure. Like I think to turn on my Dragon Ball Z hype music. And it's like, 
<laughs> there's like a I don't need to go into it but it's so ridiculous the playlist I listen to it's just like call me ha! and then it's like dubstep and I'm like am I really doing this and I'm seriously like yes you are doing this bro let's go like it's so it's so exciting but anyways um yeah I'm gonna head home see you there actually before we leave this is the perfect flat ground to do a couple of flip tricks um, I'm gonna keep it down to 10 tops because I know that I have a way of getting ahead of myself. But like, it's like a perfect downhill. It's my, this is my favorite type of ground, by the way. So it's like the black top where it's like kind of slidey, but at the same time sticky. It's just what, you know, like any town, like you have parking lots like this. So I've just gotten so used to it. Like skate parks are too slippery, but 10 tricks. I'm gonna start off with a Switch 360 flip because I feel like they just, it's perfect for this ground. There we go, first try. So kind of keep that up. Um, that's one. I want to do a nolly flip, just like a really pretty nolly flip. Pop hard, flip fast, that kind. Oh, I felt so good. See, I feel good right now. This is what I mean. Like, this is why I got to stay out of the skate parks, I feel like, for a little while. Like, any parking lot, like, I'm back in my own zone. I feel happy. It's just hard when it's not Thanksgiving to find open parking lots like this. Half calf flip. That one has been hit or miss recently. See what I mean? Like it's, it's really easy to not rotate that one right, but that's the one trick where it's like, if I under rotate it, sometimes even over rotate it, it'll still work. Like even down something, under rotate it, like it'll work. Oh, that felt great. There we go, so that's three. Maybe backside heel flip. That one is like, Every time I try it, I have to kind of practice it, but then once I practice it, it's like my favorite trick, but I just have to kind of keep going at it. There we go. I didn't like the uh, pop flick timing. I was a little late on the pop, but that's okay. It still worked out nicely. Uh, that's four. So then, I don't really know if I want to do 10. I just want to do something simple. Keep it, you're good. Don't push this. Barrel heel. That one I don't do enough. Oh, God. It didn't even pop. That was almost like a pressure, like my front foot almost like pressurized it around. I don't know if I've ever done a barrel heel like that where it just didn't pop at all. Oh, that felt great. There we go. That felt really good. See, like this setup, this is what I like. This is how you know you're a cynical person and you really have to get your shit together, AKA me. I did that and I'm like doing these tricks and they feel good and I'm like, yeah, but once this board's bad and my shoes suck and I'm no longer, it's like, no, stop. Like, you're having a good day. Move on from this. Keep the good energy. Take it to the next place. So I think that's five, right? I'll do a nollie front side flip. That's like one of my favorites. And I was trying down a flip trick or down a stair set recently, I landed Primo. So it shows how little I practice it. Yeah, see, that's fine. But like when I go down something, it's easy for me to over-rotate them. Huh. Man, flip tricks are so fun. Um, that's six. Fakie front heel. This is a good one. That was, I mean, the trick is good. The way I did that one, I would really prefer you never show anyone that I did it like that. But that's a good one too. That's a really, really, really good trick in a game of skate. A lot of people miss it. Like people just don't practice front side heel foot variations. But the fakey ones are so much easier. Like regular is so difficult. Yeah, I'll take that. Still a little like floaty. There are certain ones too that are a little easier down stuff. Fakey front heel for whatever reason has always been easy off drops. Nollie back heel is the same way. I just don't feel like doing a nollie back heel on flat right now. It just feels kind of like frustrating. So is that eight? I'm gonna just do, man, can I just, okay, here, we gotta conquer my OCD today. My head always pushes it. So I'll do like 13 tricks instead of 10 because I'm not sure if I did them all. Today, can we do nine tricks instead of 10 and live with like that potential missing one? I don't think so. Oh, Nolly Heel. I, saw, I watched a video of people doing that today. Looks fun. Oh no, the one I missed was the Nolly Heel. Oh no. That's what happens when you're too cocky, straight up. When you got confident and you're like, nah, this one's chill, I just do it real quick. That's when you mess up. Oh my God. 
<laughs> what is going on? Okay, I think I'm trying too hard. I'm like thinking about the trick a lot. Even though I just said the problem was that I wasn't trying hard enough. What is it? It's just the timing. I, I'm not popping flicking correctly. Yeah, there we go. I like that. Nolly heels are also like wonderful down stuff. I don't know why. Just the perfect rotation. Okay, so I gotta do a switch flip. That's the classic. Like switch flip I always have to do because I'm not the best at them, but they feel good on flat when I do them right. Like that felt good. Could have flicked a lot better. But let's not push it. Ah. Oh. This is why I need to play more games of skate. They're so fun. But you know, I know that a lot of people watching was like, why don't you do the barracks game of skate? And I blew that opportunity, but I have zero regrets. That, that thing is like bizarre. It would've been fun though. It would've been cool to see. But like at this point, I'm just like, I would rather just like play one of them. Like, I don't know, Nick Holt was in the finals. I've played him in the games of skate like a million times, but like Jamie Griffin won. And I'm like, I couldn't beat Jamie. As weird as it sounds, I think in battle of the barracks, I could, have a chance of beating pretty much anyone in it except for Jamie Griffin. I, I just don't think it would happen. And that's like, I'm a very negative person. So that being said, says a lot. Or I don't know, shut up. Okay, um, nollie backside flip. I love that trick. I wanna do something that feels good. I feel like a nollie backside flip feels really good. All right, right here. There we go. All right, let's head back to the house. I came home and I actually knew this was gonna happen. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. So my brother and I, any opportunity we get to, uh, to like do the thing and then you come home, you're like, what? You've already made it this far? Like I do this with Sarah all the time. She's yeah. like, oh, we gotta, we gotta build this thing together. I'm like, oh yeah, we gotta build it together. As soon as she walks outside, I'm like, shh. Yeah. So it's always every little thing. But yeah, I, I kind of figured, I was like, if Matt is awake, which I wasn't sure if you were gonna be, I was like, he's gonna be in it. Yeah. Um, he's gonna be like a British man who says, isn't it? When he's like, in it? In it. <laughs> in it. Um, and yeah, the worst thing you can do to another person though, is to be in the kitchen when they're working. <laughs> so I'm gonna wash my hands. Cause I feel like you're already like pretty close to done, huh? Yeah, it's getting there. Damn. Like... This, what? Almost some. The stuffing's got... already done, so. Yeah, the stuffing's done. Um, just gotta cook the mac and cheese and the green bean casserole. And the mm. dessert's like easy. It's, I think the dessert's like 20 minutes to pick though. Oh, okay, cool. So you can just put that in like as we're eating maybe? Yeah. Dude, I'm super juiced. So we're literally making the vegan version of uh, green bean casserole, stuffing, which he's already finished with, and then mac and cheese. And then we have an apple pie. Oh, and... What kind of apple pie? A Dutch apple pie. Dutch apple pie. And my brother eats a lot. So we'll probably eat all this like today. Hey. We might not even have leftovers. What day are you leaving? This is actually my wife's office. It's a pretty good place to work. I've actually never tried to work in here. It's usually, I mean, it is very, very messy. There's stuff everywhere, but I feel like right here, actually, these desks are massive and it's very nice. So putting this here and I'll probably do some sketches and actually try to get some artwork put together. By the way, like I know I talk about artwork in these vlogs. If you ever want to see them, uh, the squad bots on Instagram, like those are the characters that I play with. They're called squad bots. For me, like with art, especially, one thing that's always been very hard for me to do to do is put restraints on things so that you can sort of create in a narrative that people can follow. If you're just like, I wanna create anything and everything all the time, that's perfectly fine. But like the accounts that get the most engagement that I've noticed, they kind of just do one thing. I'm not saying that that's how you should live and I'm not saying that's how you optimize creativity and joy, but it seems like in terms of business, unfortunately, people really wanna show up over and over again if they have the same exact thing consistently to follow. So like the accounts that I follow, it'll literally be like almost the exact format. And when I started, I actually had a friend who is a really successful artist within skateboarding. He's kind of moved on beyond that. He will literally create like 10 different accounts and post like four things a day on all the accounts that are just following the exact same theme and utilizing whatever's popular at the time, like Instagram posting on reels and using the songs. I'm not saying that's where I ever want to be. I definitely do not want to do that. But for him, it seems to work. He has multiple accounts. I have like over 10,000 followers. But to me, it's just like that, that just seems like such a, you have to find the middle ground of like what works for people to appreciate and what you want to make. And that's a very, very difficult balance. And some people, you know, you lean too far into the creative. You don't make money. That's perfectly fine. One day you might just lean into the thing that you enjoy. But sometimes you do kind of have to be like, eh, give a little, you know, but that's, it's tough, so I'm here to find the balance. But we're probably gonna eat before I even get into anything, so 
The food looks delicious. So this is macaroni and cheese. Boom. And when we scroll over, this, you can tell everything's very bready. We're gonna be getting very fat. That's the point of Thanksgiving. What's that? Exactly, dude. What's that? I'm DTO, down to fat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is the casserole, I assume. Yeah, green, green bean casserole. Can't even see the green bean because it's covered in braid. Exactly. And this is? That is the stuffing. Ooh, and this, my friends, the thing that you will be wanting to eat the most. The Dutch apple pie. Dutchess apple pie. All right. It's really crumbly. Shall we? How was that? That's good. How was that crumb? Yeah, that was a nice one. Got a crumb. Again. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my God. Here, let's get this closer. Holy schmack. Holy schmack and cheese. <laughs> Man, that Dijon is like something else, huh? Dijon Hill? Oh, I should have taken a picture of this. <laughs> I just have to ruin everything. I wish there was a job where you, like what I just did. I wish that was a job. Well, I mean, like make up. <laughs> make up the, the worst possible <laughs> puns, yeah. humanly possible. Starting with the mac and cheese. Dude, this is spicy for sure. The mac and cheese? Mm. Oh snap. Oh snap, that is spicy. Mmm. <laughs> oh, that's so that's good spicy. though. It is really good. Ooh. Dang, that's spicy. That is that's good though. Wow. Why is Dijon mustard so spicy? I don't know. Man. Cause that's the only spice you put in it, right? Yeah. Weird. Alright, I'm going straight for the green bean. It's just yeah, Dijon mustard, that's it. So the green bean has green bean, mushrooms, onion flakes, I assume. Yeah, onion flakes, yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's really good. Dude, onion flakes are good. I don't know if anyone told you that. Mm. Yeah, that's good. This all tastes like, I was gonna say relatively healthy. Well. What? What? I got a fucking stem. Oh, dude, the stuffing's good. Oh yeah? Yeah, the stuffing's especially good in conjunction with everything else. Like after that, you bite that, Try mm. now try the stuffing. It goes with it really well. Yeah. Because it's like a contrasting taste. Dude, that's good. That's what I wanted, man. I wanted like three distinct like tastes. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Elvis. Take it to the couch, watch Puss in Boots, The Last good. Wish. Yep. Thanksgiving tradition. Yeah. It just came out. <laughs> we like, did that every year. Yeah. yeah. Growing up. Since we were eight, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. <laughs> yeah. So it's rated R. Nice. For strong violence. Brutal, huh? Yeah. Strong ass violence. Hello, how are you? Sorry, I was setting something up. How are you doing? How you doing, Mom? Um, I'm fine. Good. Did you guys have fun today? I can't believe Aunt Diana's there. Have you guys been seeing her a bunch? No, I haven't. Isn't it strange that I have an entire family that I've never just never shown in my videos? Like, 30 cousins. We're here! We did it! A second session. A very, very rare sight. I am hardly ever skating more than once anymore. I'm hardly skating once sometimes. But I've been skating a lot recently, and now we're gonna skate twice in one day. Of course, it's Thanksgiving because there's empty parking lots. It's a lot easier for us to, uh, to get into the flow. But right now, I'm just gonna skate both of them, try to figure out which one I actually mainly wanna skate. Um, it's probably gonna be the box. Actually, it's gonna be the flat rail because I've been skating the box a lot, so I feel like the flat rail deserves a good sesh. Oh, that feels so nice. I feel really good today, and I think the thing is when I do flip tricks and I'm like feeling good on my board, my brain immediately goes, you should do those flip tricks downstairs, which, you know, is cool. I'm down for that. I do like stairs. But instead, I'm like, why don't you just do those flip tricks into the ledge? Like, that's how you can figure out new tricks. It'll be fun. It's what you like to skate. And I kind of do want to keep it a little low key right now just because I'm always hurting myself, especially my lower back. So I actually feel a bit relaxed by just skating. So there's a whole family behind you behind the camera just watching me talk. Very awkward, but it's all good. Oh my God, with rails, it's a joke. Like with rails, it just isn't fair. Huh, yeah, I think the rail, I haven't actually had like a, a successful session on the rail, I feel like in a bit, especially with rails. So it keeps my board stronger and I'm able to slide better. Like I feel like now is the opportunity. Oof. Front board is always like kind of scary. With a surface as flat as that as well, it's actually easier to stick. So you have more surface area that needs to slide when the area is that wide. It might feel like it balances you better, but it actually 
has more grip on you. It's always a round rail. Like after a little while, the square rails are easy at first and then round rails become a lot easier because you just kind of glide as long as you wax it well. Ah, feels good today. If you revisit the kickleback tail, people are like, no, do not. That was such a bad day for you. It's true. All right, how about this? Maybe work on some nollie rail tricks. That's pretty good. I've been thinking a lot about, I had a video where I did like the Yuto Horigami. He's, it's one of his like tricks that he's just God tier at, which is like nollie front 180 switch feeble to regular. And I've just been thinking about variations of that. Like I'd be like, oh, it's really cool if fakie, I did like, I'm realizing the parking lot's kind of slanted. So I might have to move the rail if I want to try this, but like a half cap flip feeble. I've actually did one before at a skate park, but I did it really sloppy, didn't really get good footage of it. And I feel like that would be a really cool one. So just like, yeah, full on half cap kick flip, land in a feeble. So it's a little tough on this rail. I'm still scared in this feeble. Cause your wheel can actually get locked in on the side. So like, I'll go ahead and try switch feeble because they should be really easy. I do them all the time but it's also something that I miss kind of a lot. I don't know, like I don't lock in a lot of times, it's annoying. <laughs> Just accidentally invented a trick. Switch feeble, body barrel. Like, I feel good right now, I don't know. Hmm, let me try, oh, like if I'm gonna do the half cap flip feeble, okay, I think we're gonna focus on the rail. How would I want to do it? Cause there's like actually a little bump right here. Cause the whole parking lot goes this way. So it might be best to approach it like this. Maybe here, I'll set it up, switch the angle a bit because it doesn't matter. It's all in the shade. So let's see. I don't know. Like that maybe come this way. How does that? That looks pretty good. I feel like that looks pretty good. And then I'll just move the box all together because who cares? I feel like we've skated this thing a lot recently and we will skate it a lot. It's fine and dandy, but I think it's time that I figure out some new rail tricks. And I have a really good time actually figuring them out. So from this angle, yeah, I think that's good. We'll see. Set up the angle. <laughs> uh, this is what sucks is like every little tiny, tiny, tiny thing can throw you off. Like even it being like slightly slanted this way. That's why like it's really hard to find a parking lot that's good. Ooh, I lost my autofocus. Trying to think if that angle works. Yeah, that's what you're afraid of. And by you, I mean me. Yeah, I think that's... Oh man, why is it bothering me? I feel like the area is just so out of whack. Like that felt good. It's just if I start flipping into it, is it gonna feel crazy? Oh, pretty good. Like that would have worked really, that was a really good half cap flip actually, but it was, it was a good half cap flip for the reason it wouldn't have actually been that great for this trick because the nose was like super tweaked and like downstairs, man, that looks awesome. People will rejoice. And that's the reason I practice them like that. But when you go to a rail, you needed a little rocket or a little level so we'll see. Oh, it doesn't feel right. Sorry. It's so in my head. Like, I think it just needs to be here. I feel pretty good. Like, if I just, like, flail the half cap flip, it's a flat rail. Like, what the hell is going to happen? Not to curse myself, but... All right. Fakey flip, lip slide. It's just this is a lot of weight. So this trick also scares me, but with the rails, we should be good. Like, if I just, like flail the half cap flip it's a flat rail like what the hell is gonna happen not to curse myself but all right fakey flip lip slide it's just this is a lot of weight so this trick also scares me but with the rails we should be good if i break a third board because the first two boards i broke one the first day the second one i broke in the first session as well so it was like two days two boards let's see if the third board and it was this rail scary okay oh 
helps to think. It's like hitting the rail. Oh God. This is the problem with skating when there's like one hour of daylight left, you get really like antsy. Holy crap. Holy crap. Dude, it didn't stand a chance. Three boards, three days. Oh. Dude. And it's always on this flat rail. Fuck, man. Okay. That is infuriating. I mean, I was like really excited about this. Like, I mean, I, I really, the message is stop skating the flat rail, like with doing like flip tricks into it. That is literally the message. But for some reason I'm like, I feel like that's a, I don't know. Cause like the more I work out too, like I'm going to get heavier. So this is going to get harder and harder. I'm going to break more boards. So I really don't think there's a way around it. Like, I think I have to not focus on like doing board side tricks. Like I think like, well, I was going to do the half cut flip feeble, but I needed to warm up to it. But like, if I tried the half cut flip feeble, my board wouldn't be broken. Cause I would have had the truck to deal with the in-between. <sighs> like I have extra boards, but they're like my pro model boards. I don't want to start, you know, I want to collect those forever. I don't think I have any extra, this is crazy. Like I used to have so many extra decks and for whatever reason, I just haven't gotten a package in a while. Um, I don't know, I think it's just tough because I'm in California. It's a little harder to get to me, but dude, I put the rails on this board too. And I said that at the skate park, I said the reason I don't like putting rails on is because it feels like a waste, but rails are only $10. But boom, that's an extra $10 down the drain when a board breaks. And it's like an extra maybe two minutes of work. Not much, but I wanted to enjoy the out. <sighs> Sorry, I, I just, this is my favorite time of the day. I like to enjoy it. Now I'm kind of sitting here like, I guess I could just lurk. I could just linger. So I'm gonna end the day doing a bit of jumping around, a bit of parkour, right? So I'm gonna jump on top of this. That's my first thing. I think it won't be too bad. I just realized I'm wearing my rings. But one, I can just run and kind of like that. It's not too bad. I would like to do just like a jumping to see if I could jump that high, but I know I can't. I could probably do this one here though. But this is up to here. Run and jump, obviously not too bad. First try for the homies. Oh my God. All right, let's see if I can jump this high without like stepping in, like basically just from a standstill. <sighs> yeah. It's hard though, cause you wanna like, you, it's almost better to start back and like launch forward, but then you're at more risk because you're going at it. And if your feet don't make it up there. Oh, that's hard actually. Maybe I should be closer. All right. Okay, so it's basically, it's funny cause I swear I've done like an ollie this high. It is this high. So that's probably a little more than three feet. <sighs> oh, there we go. Not the greatest. I mean, not even really that pretty, but I'm stoked. Oh man, I went too far. Oh, that's when it's spooky. Is on the other side when you have like a straight up death drop. It's not waste time. We were actually on the way to a school. It's like one minute up the street. I'm just gonna go there. All right, I'm gonna try a backflip. The first backflip is a good tail sign, even though it's it's like wet grass for some reason. So I'll try to do a backflip. And depending on that, we'll see where we are in the parkour journey. But if I underturn it, I'm gonna shoot out into the wet grass. What in the world? Okay. Now it's funny because after I've been doing parkour for a bit, I've realized that backflip is like still kind of like harder than a lot of other stuff. Like front flip became easier, side flip became easier. Back flip's like still a little spooky, but you have to just basically jump and tuck the hell out of it to do it. And I haven't been able to do it with pants yet. So this will be interesting. There we go. Okay, okay. It felt better. See, like my lower back immediately felt it though. It was like, whew, like it was kind of weighty. That feels good. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know, because why not? Boom, That's, that actually feels really, really satisfying. It's hard to explain like until you start jumping around like a weirdo, 
what we could do is jump far enough to land on this one and then try to hit the next one. I think that would actually be somewhat harder. Like, yeah, that, that would have been perfect. And then, oof, it's gonna be difficult to, oh, to probably do that. Whew, let's see how long each one is. How about that? Five, six, a little more than six, but the space in the middle is obviously almost two and a half feet. So you're jumping like, I guess, seven feet, then seven feet. Oh, that's chilling. That is chilling. Uh, that's chilling. That wasn't pretty. There we go. There's one way I learned. Let's see if I can just do it. Ooh, like that. Where it's like a good way to turn around. So like if you're running into a wall in a line and you want to turn back around, you go like, not like that. Basically a smoother version of that. But it would be like, I'm trying to think of a line. I could like Kong this. And as soon as I land, be like, it's hard though. You really have to have like strong hands to get around. Like that, yeah. I could probably do that. That's definitely a good goal, I feel like. I don't know about right now, but let's see. It's one, two, three, four, almost five feet. That's significant, but it does go a little lower. It's just so scary because I'm not, I mean, if I just, I just gotta practice what I'm doing now. Ooh, that's spooky. See what I mean? I could probably do that. You know, see what I mean? Like I kind of want to just commit, but that's freaky. All right, that's a future goal. I don't know. I think my Kongs are still very basic. Like when I had other people kind of commenting on the video that I posted of me Konging, they were like, dude, you need to figure out that run up run. You need to figure out how to put your feet correctly and you need how to keep the ledge that you're about to hit eye level. So if it was something like this, they're literally saying like, before you jump, you gotta be like here. And then you gotta be like, boom. And they say the harder the block, which I assume means just your hands, bam. Like the higher and further you'll go. <clears throat> it doesn't feel terrible. So where was I? Eh, I'm like five inches short. So yeah, I just gotta run a little faster. It's funny, I'm just doing this and I'm feeling it in my lower back. Like I think parkour has been maybe the thing that has been hurting me to make skateboarding harder. That's why people say you can do anything, but you can't do everything. Oh, that was so close. Like the goal is I kind of want to get past it, but I might just like stick it. Ooh, that was sketch. That was like full body forward. That was better, right? I think that's the best I can do right now. I'm not mad at it. Actually, let me watch it. Maybe I will be mad at it. Yeah, that's, I think that's all I can do. One more backflip for the road. That first one actually felt pretty good. Yeah, I feel good. Like that time I felt like I could have kept slinging. So, okay, cool. All right, how many pull-ups oh. pull can I do um, right now? Probably like 30. Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd be like, boom. Uh, okay. So much I cracked. What happens if you do it in the middle? Does that feel super crazy to you? Uh, I think so. Yeah, it feels fine. Let's see. Boom. Yeah, yeah. Does that count as a pull-up? Yeah. Okay, cool. See. I'm aiming for six, dude. Oh. Let's go. There you go. That's six, right? Yeah, you're doing it, man. Yeah, that's good. I'll take seven. Nice. Was that seven? Yeah, dude. Oh my gosh. Look good. at me. You know how many I could do a year ago? Not one. What? I literally. This is this is the craziest thing. Did parkour do that for you? Uh, I started doing pull-ups so I could learn those climb-ups. Oh. I literally got into this so that I could do that. Oh my gosh, dude. But the first time I was just hanging on it like this, yeah. and I literally was like, I can't move. Like I literally could not get myself up. Right now I'm just gonna do push-ups and this, and then finish this drawing, and then eat dinner. And then I'll do some of the weights, 
Ooh. I'll get a little, and then a little, and then a little. Let's go. Cool. And then I'll do the Peloton. For, nice. And then, whatever. Yeah, so I, I need to get through the routine. Oh, if you hear me talking, it's probably to the camera because I have no friends. All right. Okay, anyways, you don't need to watch the whole thing. I'm just gonna do uh, three reps, 10 push-ups. I'm gonna do 100 push-ups total, 30 pull-ups total, and then move on to the next thing. All right, we're on the last five push-ups. Oh, pretty lightheaded, actually. Here we go. Oh my God. Okay, that was tougher than usual because I usually put a minute in between each rep. So I like look at my timer and then I like measure. I'm like, if it's at like 16 minutes and 58 seconds, then of course I start over at 15 minutes and 58 seconds. This time I was just hitting the next rep, the next pull-ups or push-ups every time it hit the minute mark. So it starts at 20 minutes. I have to do the push-ups that kill some of the time. So technically I was basically only leaving like 45 seconds in between each rep. And every time that minute mark hit, I'm like, boom, get into the next one. And that actually took a lot. I'm sweating a lot more than I usually do when I do this. But usually I do two sets where I do like 50 push-ups, 50 push-ups like during the day. I just did all 100 push-ups now. And it's funny because like I've done this for quite a while, but instead of like my numbers going up and doing like 200 push-ups or anything like that, or doing, all, all I'm doing is like making the push-ups better. So like now, my push-ups are more legit, my pull-ups are more legit, and now I'm like doing it the way I should do it. I think at the beginning I was just thinking about numbers, like 100 push-ups, and they were just like the worst push-ups, like barely going down, like not burning anything. And now, you know, hopefully by next year I'm still doing 100 push-ups, but they just look perfect. Like they're just like poof, 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 poof. <sighs> Okay, cool. Let's get to the drawing. So this one's just gonna say thankful for the homies, and these are like some of my characters. These are the ones I actually wrote the children's book about that should be coming out soon. Uh, I have to like order the hardcovers. So I basically just lay out their bodies, but it's gonna look like the camera's looking down and they're laying on the grass. So I basically just have to draw them in the position to where they're like laying on their back, having their hands behind their heads, super chilling. I think it's gonna be very cute. Uh, they'll be fist bumping and then I'll draw some like folly looking things around them and then I'll post it. It's kind of weird to do a Thanksgiving post so late, uh, but the goal is to eventually have like, cause you know, this was pretty easy to construct the actual text. I had to make the H bigger so that this looked better with the design, like for the, it had to like be flush with the top of the H. I know that probably sounds boring to people who don't care about design, but this is something I'm obsessed with. Like I love like perfect angles and lines. You probably noticed in my videos when I film, like I love things just being really like straight lines kind of working like that. So I'm gonna get this done. I'll let you know what it looks like at the end or I'll show it to you and then we'll post it. Um, and I think it'll be cute. I think it actually turned out super cute. The issue with drawings like this is it's, I mean, there's no issue. It's just fun. You have to kind of let yourself be in the moment creating it, but it is tedious. Like it takes a long time. And you know, like how I am with skating where I'm trying to rush the session. I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's go. You just can't be that way with creating any type of art because a lot of this is like, I can just sort of trace over the characters and then I color it, but it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be therapeutic. And it's just funny that I'm, I'm always like rushing and going and going. And it's a really good lesson in like pausing and then taking my time, but it's just difficult for me to sort of adjust to that. But I'm proud of it. I actually like how this ended up. I'm gonna post it right now on Instagram and then I'm gonna eat dinner. But right now it's about to be 8, 8, 8 p.m. Um, so we're probably gonna eat, maybe finish Puss in Boots and maybe do my Peloton. That was a wonderful Thanksgiving. My brother is the man. I think tomorrow we're gonna hang out some more. It's going to be fantastic. I definitely have a lot of work to get done. It's really, really hard for me to balance working with hanging out with people. I mean, my brother knows this about me. I'm not saying anything that's gonna offend him if he watches this video later, but like tomorrow he's like, let's really get it tomorrow. And I'm like, man, today I felt like we really got it. We hung out for like four hours, but then of course he's in town staying with me. Four hours probably doesn't seem that long to him because he's like here to hang, but he also, his schedule was flipped. Like he's going to stay up until like 4 a.m., wake up at this random time, take a nap for three hours in the middle of the day. You know, his, his, our schedules are so switched. Like he's like the opposite of me when it comes to like, I'm like 10 p.m 
a.m., 6 a.m., I'm up, let's go, I gotta da 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 But like with creative work, as I was saying earlier, here's the problem though. Like with an art piece, it takes, you know, I'm like, oh, you gotta be okay with it taking two or three hours. I don't think other people understand that. I'm not saying Matthew doesn't, but other people will be like, hey, you know, like a manager will be like, can we take a call at one? And I'm like, okay, well, if an RP takes me three or four hours and it takes, you know, four hours of creative work, you know, I could be spending like six hours on a piece where I'm only really drawing for an hour. Okay, that's too long. Let's say it takes three hours, two hours I'm thinking about the piece, one hour I'm drawing. Like you need so much filter room to make one little thing. And people might think like, oh, it's that easy. You just kind of hack in there. I'm just like, no, it's the mental space around creative work that takes way more effort than the actual creative work itself. Like I wish sometimes that people would just feed me what to do and I would just do it. But so that it's really hard to balance the relationships and the extra time and all that stuff. And that's why I don't really hang out with a lot of people because it's like, if I'm trying to actually skate and work out consistently, you know, that's hours in the day, hours. Creative work is just so difficult and time consuming. It's not like I can just hang out with a homie at 6 p.m. and then hang out for an hour and then by 7 p.m. the last three hours of the day, be able to create a bunch of stuff. I just can't, you just can't like, pre-program that you need that buffer in hopes that something kind of comes to you in that space super bizarre anyways I was, i've been thinking a lot about creativity and stuff and i say that because i am i'm slightly stressed because recently you know we went on vacation we did this stuff and all these things in life it's so funny because they sound like the right things right like you got to take a vacation you got to do this and like i was kind of just tripping like most of the time i was like man i really want to do the things i like to do that's kind of it like my life i'm like People are like, oh, you should do this more. You should do this less. You should do this. I'm like, can I just do the things I want to do? Because the things I want to do also make me money. It's like I almost set up the perfect life that people explain to me that you should have. And then it kind of became like, a lot of people don't, you know, obviously, I think that's fine. I'm a YouTuber, skateboarder, artist, whatever. People don't take my job as seriously as you may think. Big surprise. But they'll kind of, like I was telling someone the other day, yeah, I'm, I'm getting kind of tired of my job. I'm getting, you know, whatever. And they were like, skating every day or like i'm exhausted from work skating all day like people have done that and i'm like well yes it is kind of tiring being physically active like that it's kind of tiring editing coming up with ideas and then the drawing and the blah, blah, whatever i don't know it, it's i think the thing is like it's just a normal job like any other job it's not harder easier whatever it's just a just like anything else right you could say the same you could come up with some condescending answer for literally any other job out there i used to be a bus boy you could easily be like oh it's hard to be a bus boy imagine being a server it's hard to be i was a construction it's hard to be construction imagine being a roofer you could always like demean anything so anyways in my head I, I just i don't know what my point is i think it's basically that like things the difficulty of any situation changes from different perspectives. It's, it's so strange. You like do the thing you love to do for a living and then you find out that other people are almost like, well, now that you have free time, do all this other stuff. And you're like, nah, that's not, you know. Anyways, so I'm trying to figure that out. Um, hanging out with my brother's cool though. Um, I just, you know, after he leaves and maybe after the holidays, I'm going to be like, this year, no one's gonna see me. 2024, you're not seeing my face at all. I'm gonna be deep in the work. I'm gonna have a kid. So I'm going to never see anybody again for the whole year. I know that sounds really intense, but it's like, let's talk on social media. I got my wife, I got my child, I got my family on FaceTime. I got, you know, like, I know, I don't know. It sounds really weird. It sounds like, it almost maybe sounds kind of sad that I'm just like deflecting everyone. You need your close group of friends. Oh man, what's my point? My point is, thanks for watching. <laughs> Sorry I ranted like that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed these long vlogs. Um, a lot of it is really just like whatever's coming out of my mouth first thing. And it's the end of the night, I'm a little tired. That's why my words are slipping a bit. But I really do hope you're enjoying these because they're fun to make and they're very cathartic. And uh, ideally I'll make some more content and it'll go your way and hopefully i'll be adding a lot of extra like fun bits in life um because right now i'm sort of in my training arc as they say but it'll be cool when i have more opportunities coming up and you know um thanks for watching that's all it means a lot appreciate your face take care progress daily happy thanksgiving even though this is going to be way later and uh keep killing it